Mahantesh Sabara joins us on the show now. Mahantesh, will you use this dip as a buying opportunity on the likes of Indigo and Honasa? So see, you know, both these companies have a very profitable outlook. So generally a dip should mean that uh, one can uh, take a bite of these companies. But, you know, uh, if I look at Indigo, you're entering the lean season right now. And uh, uh, therefore, one needs to be a little careful uh, when it comes to the airline stock. As far as Honasa is concerned, uh, they are in for a little tough competition ahead. So uh, one would rather wait out what the management would like to say post uh, these dips, post this, um, you know, equity changes, etc. Uh, to to really uh, take make more sense of it. As it is, the overall market seems to be a little shaky right now, and therefore uh, we might have a, an effect on these two stocks coming in if the market overall dips. Right. That has been sensing a lot of pa uh, panic after CBI has searched the homes of uh, some of their, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, corporate office members. It's arrested a few employees as well, it seems. And that stock mm -hmm. has been gapped down from the word go. Right now, also lower by about 8% as we speak. Uh, some of the other ones, TRIL, that's been a buzzer from the word go. The QIP opened. The floor price set at about 699 thereabouts. So that stock has been a buzzer. And like Anisha was flagging off, there's a bunch of block deals which have happened. IRB, Honasa being cases in point today. Reliance Power, though, that's up 10%. The company has now become debt-free on a standalone basis. And they've uh, managed to enhance their operational competence as well. But Mantish, uh, you know, many say that about power as well, along with the financiers, that that's also an overvalued pocket right now. Would you say wait it out, let some of the fizz actually ease off to make a fresh entry or even make, a, you know, add on to the existing positions? Actually, within the power sector, if you look at the distribution companies, uh, then I would say that uh, they've been simply overvalued. Power grid... Uh, romping ahead into the overvaluation territory is clearly visible. Uh, but some of the companies on the generation side, uh, particularly those which are coming with uh, projects on the solar or renewable, uh, renewable energy side, can look uh, pretty attractive. So it is all about the CapEx team because, you know, uh, overall the country will soon get into a power shortage kind of mode and power generation will be the thing to look forward to, not necessarily the distribution. There is a, enough overcapacity already seen on the distribution side. Point taken. So that's a view coming in on some of these power stocks as well. But talking about power, there is, of course, this entire buzz around the PSU sector. And the biggest debate is whether one should book out the profits that they have made after, this, after the big rally that we have seen, or is there going to be perhaps a pause uh, as far as the growth is concerned? We pose this question to a whole host of our experts as well. Listen into what they had to recommend. If there is earnings growth, then you look at the P and then you decide whether to buy or not. But otherwise, anything to do with PSU going up, I think it was a sentiment driven rally, which in all probability will stop. I think what will continue, in my opinion, same building, push on infrastructure, push on manufacturing. Prime Minister has spoken many times about, you know, how we need to become self-reliant. So I think th those policies will continue. Uh, you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the reforms, especially in some of the critical sectors, you know, will continue. I mean, whether it was power, infrastructure, everywhere, I think lots of things were happening and maybe, you know, they will continue, especially one sector where I think it can become bigger is problem power. But I think uh, given where uh, valuations of the private sector uh, units are, uh, the capex continuity, uh, particularly in railways, defense, power, uh, you know, uh, the private counterparts are actually trading at uh, significantly higher valuations. And when you have a situation when, uh, you know, the internal machinery in the PSUs is being geared up for growth and creation of market cap and rewarding shareholders and all stakeholders, I think there is a case for a re-rating in the PSU space, even from these levels. In fact, uh, post the interglobe aviation block, we caught up with Janesh Joshi as well from Prabhudas Steeladhar on his take on the stake sale by the promoters, the company fundamentals right now. Here's what he told us. Typically, promoter exits are viewed with uh, suspicion. And given the fact that we have been seeing Mr. Gangwal exit for quite some time, obviously this 2% stake sale has indeed come as a surprise. 
but I, I don't think we should be reading too much into it because the fundamentals are pretty much intact. And uh, I think this is after a long time uh, that they have decided to exit 2%. And again, there is a one year lock in from here on. Uh, I, I, so I believe that uh, we shouldn't be reading too much into it uh, and, and we are hopeful that uh, the delivery will continue from here on. So they reported about 8,400 crores in terms of PAT in FY24. That was a record number. Uh, for 25 and 26, we are maintaining uh, a similar profitability levels. So although we expect yields to remain at about 5 odd, but uh, in, in 26, perhaps uh, uh, the the uh, what should I say, uh, the fuel cost might uh, rise a bit. So we are not very gungo in terms of uh, profitability, but if yields can surprise. So for instance, for 1Q, they have mentioned that their passenger rask is similar to what uh, they reported in 1Q of FY24. So if there is any element of surprise which comes through in the form of uh, better yield, given the fact that uh, there is an artificial scarcity created because of uh, uh, the higher number of groundings, which is giving them a better command in terms of pricing, then you can see some bit of an upgrade come through. Uh, so th that is how I would like to sum it up. Okay, so that was about Indigo, of course. But uh, Mahantesh, what's your view on the pure play EPC infra companies? For the longest time, we hadn't seen any you know, buying interest per se. And I'm talking about the HCCs, the IRBs, uh, the uh, you know other companies like HG Infrastructure, PNC Infra, KNR Construction of the Worlds wasn't much buying interest at least on the institution side as well do you see things changing because this morning of course there was that ilara note as well calling hcc a big turnaround candidate with almost a 60 percent upside from yesterday's closing yeah i think apc country con uh, companies can uh, potentially do well because you know it's all about the order book that they they will start getting in with the new government formation in, uh, you will see infrastructure activity, particularly road building kind of activity start picking up. Uh, alongside, you also have a host of uh, metro projects coming up for completion, uh, which requires that last bit of push when it comes to construction activities. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, uh, many of these construction companies are also into real estate building. Uh, that is, uh, they construct uh, a lot of uh, real estate uh, that that helps uh, bring in useful amount of business. Uh, you've seen that last two years, the residential home sales has been uh, growing up quite rapidly, upwards of 20% uh, uh, thereabouts. And you also have now office space, that is commercial, uh, as well as rental active, uh, real estate buildup starting to happen. So these developments augur really well for uh, construction companies overall. Okay, in fact, talking about HCC and the construction and the entire fillip which is expected in the current government, hear out what Mr. Ajit Gulabchand of HCC had to say on the matter. What I'd like to see is two. One is GST. I think it's time to bring the GST down to one rate if it's possible, if not, not more than two rates. Make it more uniform. Make it easy to do. Today, it's still a bit more cumbersome. And... There's too much bent on, on, on you know, those, those whom you, your suppliers don't pay the G, 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 GST, you are liable, which I think they have to start streamlining and make it easy for everybody and not put the burden of one on the other, one. Second important thing that is required apart from GST improvements is contract handling. I think commitment to contracts and simplifying settling disputes fast enough because dispute is a part of doing many contracts and given the infrastructure we want to do we will have many differences and the sooner we can address them the faster will the infrastructure happen okay and talking about those infrastructure names take a look at hg infrastructure another two percent gain in the last few minutes itself so almost a 10 percent gain on that stock at a 17% actually in the last few minutes uh, totaling to that. Viatek Babag is the other stock which is showing signs of a bit of a reversal. Water infrastructure of course has been that big theme that has been working quite well for these individual names. You also have Aadhaar Housing and Avas Financiers, Hoodcos, all of these Prime Minister um, you know, Avas Yojana plays. In fact, talking about these housing finance companies, Nuresh, is there any NBFC or these housing finance plays that you would want to bet on? That team, LIC Housing, comes up uh, top in the list. Uh, the stock has been range-bound for the last many months. Uh, uh, before this uh, correction on election day, the stock had made a bottom around 560, a top around 680. That got tested almost four or five times. We were about to break out on the exit poll day, and then it corrected again. Now we are slowly coming back towards the 680 mark. 
So if it sustains about 680, it would be a breakout of the last four months and could uh, head up well towards this previous all-time high of 750, 800 band. So that looks the most promising. The next one's also the charts are strong across the board, whether it is a Repco or a PNB housing. But my pick would be LIC housing out of the names. In fact, earlier in the day, uh, we also caught up with Ajay Kawal from uh, Jana Bank and uh, he was talking about their growth roadmap. He was also confident of being in the sweet spot right now of high growth areas currently in the economy. We have a very large customer base because we've been uh, in business since 2008 as an NBFC. So about 1.2 crore customers. If I look at the home loan penetration, it is in single digits. Uh, our uh, home loans to GDP is among the lowest in a peer group sense uh, when I'm talking of countries. So I have so much to do on the asset side. And I think we have developed an expertise. We have developed a culture. We, have, we are in 180 cities. You know, we know how to operate this machine. So will I do something very different? Unlikely so on the asset side. I think on the liability side is where the universal bank will be a very big help to us. Because we do, uh, even today, while we have now been over six years as a small finance bank and we, we are listed and all, of, you know, so is my peer group of small finance banks and we have grown a lot. I still think we pay a bit of premium for liabilities. And I think our premium will come down that we pay customers. I think our growth rate will be more, while our growth rate is very strong, we grew about 36% last year just on liabilities. I do think we'll have more sustainable growth if, if the word uh, small finance changes to a universal. Uh, our bias really in Nikunj then is to serve underserved. And when I say underserved, it doesn't mean people are only economically poor. We think there's a lot of opportunity in the MSME segment, both in inland trade, financing them, and helping them grow as we really want to see economy goes 5 trillion unlikely the small and medium enterprise won't be required uh, won't require bank support right Mantis, just looking at the market construct you know the fact that one set of major cues are behind us and the overhang is lifted uh, both the government formation as well you know uh, as the portfolio allocations are done. Do you think the market could get into a bit of a consolidation ahead of the next event which is going to be the budget? Yeah, I think uh, it will get into consolidation mode. In fact, um, I'm getting a little uh, uh, edgy. I told you earlier also that uh, the overall market situation doesn't appear uh, too healthy uh, simply from the point of view of valuation. I'm not talking in terms of uh, uh, earnings growth and thereabouts. It's, it's that the valuation uh, stretch has become uh, too, too large for, for the markets to really... Um, you know, be sanguine about. So if that is the case, then we should go through the consolidation phase followed by a small uh, down move, uh, valuations getting corrected, and then we will see a secular up move uh, with, with earnings momentum. The larger the earnings momentum, that sector uh, will see obviously a valuation expansion. Lower the earnings momentum, that sector will see valuation compression. So that is likely to happen ahead. Uh, one of the key things that we have noticed is that in this entire rally, there was a lot of growth that was happening in MNC companies. I think the MNC index has outperformed the overall market quite sharply, and that's that's become a high overvaluation zone right now. So that should correct. So I just wanted to highlight what's happening to the market because again in the last half an hour, one hour, there's that acute pressure and the selling that comes in. Um, so yesterday also it was a pretty much a mirror image that in the last half an hour there was that sudden downtick at the start of the day. This time around, uh, start of the closing trade show, today it's happening at 3 p.m. But nonetheless, there's a sharp fall underway. So we have let go of that mark of 23,300. And I'm just trying to check which are those major drags at the index level right now. And we should probably pull up some of the candlesticks as well. Because Reliance Industries is down and it's contributing 30 points to the downside. You have ICICF Bank, which is given up. Kotak Mahindra Bank is coming under acute pressure. And then you have ITC and also Infosys, which is batting for the bears today. Um, in fact, Mahantesh, as far as the entire private banking uh, gamut is concerned, and I'm talking about ICICI, Kotak, HDFC, it's almost like, you know, one step forward, two step back. They're pretty much not moving at all. What or when do you see a turnaround in these names? 
<laughs> Actually, within the private sector bank, there have been um, uh, two large banks who have been uh, lag who have been laggards. HDFC Bank is one of them. Kotak Bank is the other one. Mm -hmm. As far as ICIC Bank is concerned, I don't think that it, it is a case of uh, one step forward, two step back, backwards kind of thing. It's been kind more or less yeah, steady and steadily growing. Um, having said that, it's it's got to do with uh, not business, um, you know, uh, fundamentals, but more to do with uh, promoter and overall group level issues, which which they have not been able to sort out. So you have on one hand HDFC trying to digest the merger with HDFC Limited, and you have uh, Kotak uh, on the other hand trying to you know uh, work juggle with a lot of subsidiaries, and even there there is this overall promoter uh, overhand that that was seen in the past. So to me, uh, these two banks have been uh, uh, laggards. They they have fundamental uh, um, you know issues around uh, surrounding their um, promoter entities per se and and uh, overall corporate corporate level actions. But uh, business fundamental wise, banking sector should start doing well. That is why we saw most of the public sector banks doing well. State bank particularly uh, having outperformed the market by a wide margin. So, so don't necessarily uh, single out the private sector space per se, but when would uh, single out Kotak Bank and HDFC Bank as the laggards. Back, let's hear out what Manish Santhalia as well earlier today told us about banks. FI25 earnings growth is going to be led by technology banks, uh, you know, oil and gas uh, and metals. And uh, in that backdrop, and when we are talking about that 15% sort of a growth, and given the backdrop uh, where financials are currently, you know, they haven't really done too much in fiscal 24. I think there could be some catch-up game uh, uh, played by BFSI. And within that, obviously, private financials also has a role to play because they would have the highest weighted, so to speak. But what we need to watch out for is normalization of credit cost, uh, you know, and uh, sooner or later you would have peaking out of cost of funds. And even in the fourth quarter, we did see that uh, we didn't see too much of a dent in the margins. And uh, credit growth in the system, uh, you know, would mean that a 15% sort of a loan growth is very much doable. So across the BFSI space, both the private sector and the PSU sector, uh, you would uh, have specific names where there is valuation comfort. So I think it's a pick and choose. Uh, valuations are much more sanguine in the public sector uh, banking space uh, and also quite reasonable even the private sector banking space. So from that point of view, I think BFSI stands in a sweet spot as we speak. Okay, so that's a take coming in from Manish Sontalia. But Tata Motors is a stock which is actually holding up in the green right now. Of course, those were the investor day takeaways that we would run for you on the screen because the company is talking about how they plan to become net debt free by the end of the coming year, as well as the fact that they're looking at margin expansion of 200 basis point when it comes to the passenger vehicle segment. They're calling the longevity of this commercial vehicle cycle as well, saying that it's expected to stay for longer. Those lines will continue running for you on the screen. But in the meantime, let me toss it to uh, Rudra first to get a sense as to what he makes on the charts and when, then we'll take the question across to Mahantesh as well. But Rudra Murthy, what's the take on the charts of Tata Motors? Last one month, it has just made a consolidation and it has just given breakout above levels of 970. So for me, after this very short term breakout, yes, it will go back and test its all time high levels of around 1050. And above 1050 closing, a fresh move on the upside will come. So at current market price, definitely a buy with a stop loss of 970. Mahantesh, now your view on Tata Motors, will you buy it afresh or would you buy rather those Ashok Leland's or um, other companies which have more CV exposures, the likes of m and etc.? See, as far as Tata Motors is concerned, uh, they have done wonderfully well in terms of recovering from the past uh, losses. So the business momentum is uh, is, is quite strong with, uh, with them. The passenger vehicle uh, business is um, doing well, gaining market share. Uh, be and and uh, doing profitably uh, well enough. You also have a situation where the JLR uh, is uh, turning around and should start delivering positive uh, net positive uh, cash flows and bring the overall debt levels down. 
but there are two worry spots that i uh, that come to mind when it comes to tata motor one is on the commercial vehicle side uh, they have been um, losing the plot in terms of the overall market share uh, uh, losses that they have uh, there seems to be a little um, uh, you know uh, thought process put behind what new products what new launches what new areas uh, within the commercial sector sector to, to segment to really offer and uh, the other spot is of uh, bother seems to be china which which could affect uh, jlr uh, and we really don't know what is the long term plan they have with the jv that they have with cherry that should soon start unwinding and could uh, potentially give a uh, you know hit to tata motors so uh, while the business momentum elsewhere is uh, quite strong to me there are these two worry spots the commercial vehicle segment and the china uh, factor within jlr right okay that's the take coming in on tata motors right now let's get in some btst trades as well before we start winding up for the day nirish what's on your list so first is the buy on dalmia bharat the double bottom reverse for real stop loss stop loss at 1870 target price of 1950 second is the buy on pvr rhinox has finally crossed a three week high uh the stock has made multiple uh, test of the 1300 mark looks like a reversal in play stop loss at 1365 target price of 1420 right okay and rudra what about your btst ideas see for me sale looks very very strong and above 150 it is clearly sustaining those levels and metals as a sector also looks very positive to me so sale is a buy target of 155 for btst with a stop loss of 149 and for me biocon looks also very very strong stock specific i uh, like biocon again on charts it can move till even 400 450 zones but for very short term and for btst looking for target of 355 with a stop loss of 340 point taken in the meantime let's run you through what's uh, lying in terms of the agenda for tomorrow because it's going to be a hectic day especially with respect to the kind of data flow that we'll get the trade data the cpi data as well as the iip data for india will be out tomorrow evening so watching out for all of that uh, from the united states we'll get the fomc rate decision so that will be very crucial of course for now nobody is uh, you know expecting a rate cut but it is expected to happen from september onwards at least the part of the street is penciling that in so the commentary around that and the commentary around inflation will be fairly important to track today of course was the investor day for uh, tata motors tomorrow is the day for tata communications it's expected to be post market around 4 pm but nonetheless the stock might stay active ahead of that sobha uh, the board is also likely to meet there to mala fundraising plan so we'll be watching out for that company as well as tomorrow in the political arena uh there would be the oath taking ceremony in andhra pradesh as well as orissa so we'll be watching out for these states with the respect to the political developments because pretty much at the center level things have subdued a bit we saw all those uh, cabinet ministers taking uh, office today so after that it will shift to the local and the state election scene because at the end of the year there are a couple of important states which are lined up for the political arena in fact let me quickly ask you mahantesh anything that interested you surprised you or shocked you with respect to the portfolio allocations because we were all waiting with bated breath as to who gets what but it was pretty much similar to what was there in nga 2.0 well, i don't think there has been much um, uh, to to really take as a take away from the cabinet portfolio allocation but yes uh we had a big change that we have seen as far as the civil aviation ministry is concerned uh, probably that's uh, something which uh, uh, is is a notable fe- feature of the overall uh, cabinet portfolio allocations otherwise uh, there seems to be not much uh, that one can read into the overall allocation most of the ministers have been repeated um, particularly from the market point of view the finance ministry uh, remains with uh, madam sita raman so we we should be quite happy about that in terms of overall continuity of of uh, policies thereof is the point taken yes the other notable uh, you know change for me has been of course the power ministry where mr manohar lal khatter have actually taken over versus mr r k singh so let's see what he brings on board because uh, for now we had seen that push towards renewable as well as well as that entire uh, you know market coupling etc would there be a delay and would it impact the likes of iex etc will be interesting to track 
But as I pointed out, a lot of events tomorrow to track. So ahead of that, what do you do, Nuresh? Do you carry forward your positions? Uh, because it's been fairly volatile. India Wix has come off, but there is that bout of selling that comes on every rise. So even after that bout of selling, we are ending up, say, roughly flat uh, almost. Uh, so it does not make it a very sharp selling as such. So carry on to the positions. Uh, keep trailing uh, a stop, keep a trailing stop loss below 22,100 on the Nifty. And stock-specific price action is more interesting. We've hit a new all-time high on the small cap indices as well. Mid-cap indices also made a new all-time high today. So stock-specific could continue. Index needs to take a breather. So we are getting into a range for the next few sessions. But the bias still remains positive. You know, global setup as well is getting a little wobbly because if you just look at how the European markets, for instance, have started off in trade, they've started off about half a percent down across the board. In fact, the broader indexes like a FTSE MIB are now down a good 300 points and that equates to about a 1% fall. I just want to quickly check in on the US futures as well because they too are pretty much a sea of red. Of course, it's not a big crackdown or anything of that sort, but over 100 points down for the Dow is what the Dow futures already are. Are indicating. But winding up for the day, it's been a rain session as was the case yesterday as well. We've given up all of our gains, all of our losses. We're closing in absolutely flat for the day, 23,257. The broader market out for performance, of course, continues because you've got the nifty small cap holding up about half a percent and the mid cap index as well has done okay. Media, oil and gas, infrastructure, cap goods, power have been the leading sectors today and the underperformers, much unlike yesterday, cement, metals, pharmaceuticals and if FMCG as well, which is closed and flat, banks as well have not really participated. So Kotak Bank has been a drag today, Reliance ITC have been drags on the index, Sun Pharma, even though one of the brokerages was calling it a consistent compounder just this morning. That stock as well has closed in in the red. ICICI Bank, Axis have all weighed heavy on the index today. ONGC, of course, that was part of the tug of war on the other end. Tara Motors, LNT, Maruti, Hero Motor Corp, Autos uh, definitely have led the charge along with the oil and gas space. From within the broader end of the market, Gujarat Gas, IRCTC, the entire sugar pack, all those stocks have done very well. Petronet LNG held out by about 4.5%. HCC was a big mover today. JMR Infra as well has had some solid gains for itself. And then of course, after that block deal, Interglobe Aviation was down 4.5%. Cement, like I said, saw some profit taking. So Ramco was a laggard. But on that note, we're going to wind it up right here on this edition of Closing Trades. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.